Welcome at the German Telemedicine Center. Our commitment as a non-profit association is the establishment of telemedicine into the community. Our members are healthcare providers and service financiers coming from the healthcare sector. Patients and their relatives who advocate for improved and more flexible patient care via telemedicine are members as well. May we briefly introduce ourselves. My name is Infolina. And my name is Question Pit. We will guide you through the following information and you will get insights into the multidimensional application of telemedicine. Even people with almost no experience in telemedicine will benefit from this information. Do we see the future doctor's assistant here? Today we are not able to answer this question. The only thing we know is that mankind is driven by a thirst for research to improve our life and make it easier. If there was a technical assistant in the year 2113 supporting physicians in daily routine who could lift heavy items, is operational for 24 hours and even could fly, this would surely be nice. He could park at highly frequently crossing, could call for help or even contact an attendant via screen to get first advices for help. This idea and illustration does not reflect the present, but is a fiction for the future. And it shows what could be the future direction and it is not completely unrealistic as it would be partly doable already today. Over the past century we have seen a large development leap. Automobiles were developed in the first place, followed by a revolution in information and communication due to the appearance of radio, TV, telephone and computers. Agriculture mechanization facilitates and secures food supply. Railway and planes do the same for traveling. Today people live longer due to improved medical care. Telemedicine is a compound word where tele means long distance transfer and medicine. Contacts over long distances are possible comparable to making phone calls. Does that mean telemedicine stands for a physician phone call? Not at all. The word telemedicine can also be derived from telematics, meaning telecommunication and informatics. Not only the voice, but also data, pictures and other medical information can be transmitted with the help of telemedicine. Let's look into the practice for examples of telemedicine that already today serve an optimization and improvement of patient care. Teleconsultation makes it possible to provide a specialist's opinion. It's irrelevant if the specialist is located in a hospital, in a practice, next town or even another continent. Modern information technology enables a data and information transfer in real time. Meanwhile, apps and modern communication and information technology came into our lives. We Google recipes in the kitchen, control our stereo system or close the roll-up lights from outside our home. Regarding healthcare, lots of apps exist as well as software applications for mobile phones and personal computers. So, is it possible that Googling of medical information or software substitutes a physician's visit? No, of course not, but an app may support a treatment by a physician. With telemonitoring, vital parameters like blood pressure, heart rate or other items can be sent to a medical center. This keeps the physician informed timely about the health status of his patients prior to his next visit. In case of emergency, the physician can react promptly and contact the patient. Hitherto, patients needed to fill in a notebook, which was somewhat cumbersome and for the physician sometimes difficult to read. Today, vital parameters can be dispatched directly from the blood pressure monitor or blood sugar meter. Alternatively, parameters are forwarded by a smartphone. The illustration is complemented by a clear graphic providing valuable feedback to physician and patient. Within an employee health campaign carried out by the company health management participants experienced an objective improvement regarding blood pressure and heart rate. Goal of the campaign was to sensitize employees concerning the impact of individual nutritional behavior and exercise program on vital parameters and personal stress perception. The participants of the project felt themselves well supported and would again attend a project for minimizing personal health risks. In the described case, telemonitoring and telecoaching was combined. During telecoaching, supervision and education is done online. 
Telecoaching can be combined with face-to-face -face sessions and telephone support. There are application possibilities in the area of nutrition, stress reduction and burnout. A targeted telecoaching may help to transfer newly learned behavior, for example stress reduction into daily life, at home or working place. If a telecoaching, frequently also called e-learning, is combined with telemonitoring, a comparison is possible between objective parameters like blood pressure and subjective perceived stress level. This supports an improvement in self-assessment and self-management and helps to detect and overcome future stressful situations more easily, for example with special breathing exercises. In studies about weight reduction, it has been shown that telemedical control helps participants to maintain their weight permanently. Telecardiology may support weight reduction ideally. Especially obese people retain from training in a fitness studio because of shame and an individual training at home fails after a short time because of the lack of professional advice and motivating feedback. That's different in telecardiology. Here a supervised training is conducted in the own living room according to a plan developed by cardiologists, sport academics or therapists. The training plan will not be fixed prior to the home training as the patient then would be of his own with the execution. The exercises are transferred by telecommunication to the ergometer immediately before training start. This kind of training arrangement together with a supervising expert team is a very important piece of motivation. After finishing the exercise the supervising expert team gets a detailed feedback. Starting point is an exercise electrocardiography by the patient in a doctor's office or an obesity hospital. For example, it is possible to continue the weight reductions at home as follow-up after hospital stay. To achieve optimal results, this is a quite frequently combined with telemonitoring and telecoaching. Telecardiology is also quite common as follow-up after cardiac infarction and heart surgery or to stabilize patients with coronary heart disease. A study result here showed that patients felt themselves much safer with telecardiologic training than exercising at home alone. After finalizing the study, all patients were physically fitter and psychologically more stable. Total improvement of training results of all participants amounted for 78%. All risk factors were reduced sustainably. If telecardiology is introduced after rehabilitation as telemedical follow-up care, one often speaks of tele-rehabilitation. There are a couple of projects where patients already today have the choice to either visit a hospital for four weeks or go home after two weeks to conduct a 10 weeks training at home with telemedical supervision. Besides cardiology, telemedical follow-up care is efficient in neurology and orthopedics as well. This delay results in a performance decrease in patients compared to the discharge date. With telerehabilitation, this gap is prevented and patients exercise immediately after their hospital discharge. Like in hospital, it is possible to train several times a day with flexible training units. With the help of telerehabilitation, it is possible to avoid the so-called rehabilitation gap in orthopedic. Commonly, a time gap about 4 to 6 weeks occurs between hospital discharge and follow-up care. Goal of telerehabilitation is a fast reintegration into family and profession and to avoid a physical disability that's longer than necessary. Moreover, it is very practical to exercise at home and motivates to continue after finishing telerehabilitation. According to a study result, telerehabilitation is economic as well. In this context, the time savings for the therapist has to be stressed in the first place. He is able to go on in prescribing rehabilitation measures which are accepted, established and effective without being personally present. In this way, he is able to take care of several patients at the same time and he saves time for more severe cases. Source, computer-added multimedia training in orthopedic rehabilitation, Bernd Klatny, head of orthopedic department at MNI Special Hospital in Herzogenaurach. For the home-based training, patients get special therapy devices as a low one. With these devices, the patients are connected to their personal therapist and they are provided with training units per video including instructions.
They are able to perform the required exercises at home while supervised by their personal therapist. How can the therapist really be sure the patient is doing something and not eating a sandwich instead of training? During training, photos and short video sequences are taken at predefined time points the patient does not know. The therapist later analyzes the pictures and videos and gives advices to the patient in case he did something wrong. In neurology, teletherapy supports a high-frequent training for the recovery of lost abilities after a stroke. Teletherapy can be used to intensify important training routine parts in hospital and at home. There is a huge and important difference between teletherapy and software for patient self-exercises. In contrast to self-exercise, teletherapy is prescribed, adapted and controlled by a healthcare professional. It is also possible to apply teletherapy for training intensification in kids with linguistic deficits as well as in elderly people for prevention purposes in neurology, cardiology and orthopedic. That's amazing! And as a therapist, I appreciate this. In the past, I used to work with cards on the table in stroke therapy, and now it's all digitally available. By the way, do patients need any IT knowledge to use teletherapy? Not at all. This modern equipment is self-explaining. You just push the card on the monitor instead of pointing at the card on the table. Later on, when the patient is doing his exercise at home on his own, the therapist not only subsequently sees that the patient has retrieved his exercises, but also how long he pondered before pushing the card and how he chose a wrong one. By this, the therapist is able to individually adapt the therapy, make it easier or more difficult to achieve an optimal training effect. Healthy aging and an improved support at home enable elderly people to lead independent lives within their familiar environment of their own home. In the course of demographic development, innovative and payable care concepts, services and products for elderly are needed. Telemedicine plays an important role here. Health can be brought home in an affordable manner and the contact to the social environment as well as to a supervising medical team can be intensified. The development shows that telemedicine is increasingly progressing. It will be similar to other innovations that improved and supported our lives or represented a certain relief. Take the telephone that was invented a century ago as an example. Today private and professional life cannot be imagined without it. Telemedical applications will successively develop further and are already today an integral part in the access to healthcare. Who benefits from telemedicine? Telemedicine brings benefits to all involved. Let's start with the recipients of benefits, the patients. Who actually wants to be ill longer than necessary and who does not care for a more incentive support of being ill? Telemedicine can help either as contribution to maintaining health or for supervision in chronic disease and after a myocardial infarction or stroke for therapy and rehabilitation. Medical care providers like physicians and therapists in office-based practices and hospitals have a new instrument or ad in their hands to look after patients outside regular consultation hours. For payers like sick funds, pension funds or accident insurances and the insurance association, the viewpoint of economy is decisive. Some important information about the topic economy. According to a research conducted by the Deutsche Bank in 2010, telemedicine not only improves patient care, but also helps saving which will contribute to the conquest of telemedicine. All in all, the turnover of telemedicine is likely to increase on average 10% per year between 2006 and 2020. For the qualification of medical personnel, the German Telemedicine Center provides recognized advanced training courses. We look forward to hearing from you and will be happy to advise you about our latest training opportunities. This brief information reflects our members' experiences and represents only an extract of the telemedical portfolio. Demographical development and the widespread disease obesity that already affects more than 50% of the German population with chronic knock-on diseases like diabetes will contribute to the further evolution of telemedicine. As a member of the German Telemedicine Center, you can support our work and help to shape it. We welcome you as our new member and are happy to answer any questions. 
Finally, we would like to thank our members for the provision of expert information and images to create this brief information.